Water is the sculptor in the landscape. It carves out valleys, uh, canyons. It shapes our edge on, our, on this little island that we live on. Um, and it's this hugely dynamic element that's constantly on the move, both in our systems and in our bodies. I don't think of nature as a place or a thing, but uh, as we've already been considering this evening, it's a set of processes that all affect each other. And when we think about water and, and kind of the global system of water, that's a very easy way for um, us to kind of imagine that. The river near us is the River Avon, um, which is a great name for a river because the word Avon means river. So it's called River River. So it's almost starting to make a poem before, before you even have to do any work. Um, it's not particularly kind of long river. It's 75 miles long, but it really takes its time to get from its mouth to the sea. It's got a kind of relaxed southwest journey to make. Um, and like many people, I, I think there are certain rivers that really run through us that are part of our kind of consciousness and unconsciousness. So I would like to invite you to think about the river that runs through your life. Those of our guests that are online, you might even want to put into the chat function the rivers that are near you or run through you, whether they run through your memory, your dreams or your life. And if you would like to start thinking about um, a river that's in your life, and possibly even making a little drawing on your bit of paper that starts to describe your life as a river. Think about where you started, thinking, thinking about this, your source, where you came from, and think about where you're going. And think about all the tributaries that lead into your river, all the kind of things you have to get around in life, and all the things that help you flow. I want to talk to you about a particular river that I was able to visit a few years ago in New Zealand, the Whanganui River. I was invited to go to New Zealand um, as part of a drawing ecology project. Uh, and I stayed with the Maori community for a while on the southern tip of the North Island that was staging a remarkable kind of research or creative project where they invited in landscape architects, environmentalists, and artists to discuss some of the climate challenges they were facing, to look at, look at these challenges through various different lenses, lenses, including drawing. While I was in New Zealand, I then went on to meet with some activists that had based a campaign around this river and they had tirelessly campaigned to get this river inscribed in law with the same rights as any other member of their family and their ancestry, which they were successful in doing. So this river, from the mountains to the sea, has the same legal rights as a human. Both its physical entity and its metaphorical entity. And when I met with these activists, I, I felt such a kind of sense of relief. As someone that had made work about walking the length of the rivers, various rivers, looking, looking and listening for a river's voice, thinking about the kind of metaphysical identity of a river, um, and wondering if I should actually admit this to other people. <laughs> um, Suddenly, I was, I, I was home somehow. And I learned so much from the Maori communities that welcomed me in and shared their worldview to what this might be as a, as a kind of change in attitude to how the Western view looks at land, which is extra about extraction, ownership, and not enough respect. But as soon as you start to see a landscape fit, feature as a part of the family, you, your thinking changes. I'm going to talk about a few pieces of work here that relate to water. 
and one that started very close to here. Um, many years ago, I made a piece of work in collaboration with this institution at Bath, um, supported by a wonderful man called Michael Penny. And we transported a wildflower meadow from Bath to London via the Kennet and Avon Canal. The work itself asks the question, when you move through a landscape, does it move through you? What is the exchange as we pass through a place? I, I'm not the most rooted human I know. I'm a fairly kind of nomadic character. Um, so that, that was a really important question to me. What, what is this exchange between the places I love as I move through them? Jumping on a few years to a piece I made more recently, um, when I chose to move out of a city environment, actually. I moved out of the city and I live very rurally now, which has been a massive culture shock for me and my family. Um, but I now live next to a very little river. And that line of connection that flows past where I live feels more real to me than the road, the phone line, the internet cable, all those things. Um, and this was the first piece of work I made after making that personal move. It's called Rivers, and I went on a journey around the country collecting water from 100 rivers. And I housed this water collection in a boathouse um, just outside of Edinburgh in a space called Jupiter Artland. So inside my boathouse is a collection of a hundred different rivers that wouldn't normally be in close proximity to each other, but I brought them into a confluence. And you view the work over water, because um, the boathouse doesn't really have windows, so the light comes in off the water. After I finished that work, I wanted to make a big sister work to this that was more participatory. It wasn't about my journey collecting water. Uh, I wanted to bring water from all the world's seas to one place to see what would happen as an act of kind of sea magic that I didn't know if that was possible. So using various networks, social media, my networks, the networks of the institution that was helping me make this work, the Fruit Market Gallery in Edinburgh, we, we mobilised a global network of seawater collectors who sent me water for the project. We ended up with 365 bottles of water from all the way around the world, bringing all the world's seas to one place. And there are many sea stories locked up in this work. I've also been able to go looking through our visual record um, to find drawings that somehow chart and explore the sea and bring those together in another kind of form of collection. And I think of drawing another, as another very connecting kind of uh, art form. I think we all draw. Um, drawing doesn't belong just to artists. It's something that you'll find in many, many orders of thinking across the sciences, design, art, whether you're trying to map something or describe something. It's a really important form of visual thinking, hence me asking you to make a drawing this evening. A drawing that I make again and again and again is called my C mark. It's my kind of drawing meditation. And what I do with these drawings is I'm trying to draw towards the horizon, which is my favourite line, the place where the sea and the sky meet. Of course, it isn't a line. It's part of a curve that wraps around the planet. But this is a drawing that I use to kind of centre myself because I think drawing has a lot to offer in terms of how we uh, find stillness in our very rapidly moving world. So this is my stillness. They're not necessarily pictures of the sea. They're rather a mark that describes the movement and energy of water. And there's so much energy around us that we can't see. We can't see sound energy. We can't see, see the way light travels. Um, but we can see how energy moves through water. 
And I think it's one of the reasons we can watch the waves for hours. Because here we see energy arriving at our feet. It's the same drawing that I used on these water fountains that I've been making recently. It's, again, it's a very small gesture to try and provide spaces where people can fill up a, 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 their water bottle to try and reduce the use of single-use plastic. And because of the sea motif on, on these, you maybe think about where the water's come from and also where the water's going. Because one of the things we have an illusion about is that we can sort of throw something away. Things go down the sink and they're gone. But nothing can be thrown away. There is no away. So somehow, by making someone pause at this work called, 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 uh, uh, called well, got the word out eventually, um, you know, maybe some of those thoughts will happen. It's also the mark that I used on this small symbolic object, which is a baton, that has become part of the Relay for Nature, which is an initiative from the, um, a global sporting event, the Ocean Race, um, that have made this massive commitment to ocean health and raising more, in, more and more awareness of the importance of ocean health to all our health. Um, so this object has been passed from boat to boat, harbour to harbour, climate crisis conference to climate crisis conference around children, environmentalists, politicians. Um, most recently it was a COP. Um, it's been to various other kind of large-scale public events. And people put their pledges inside of it. They put their promises. They, they kind of articulate that making their commitment to ocean health um, and place it inside this Relay for Nature baton. The next piece of work I'm going to be making um, is another participatory work called Co-Tidal. Um, I think we suffer from a degree of sea blindness in this country. We forget about the fact most of our stuff that we don't really need but still buy arrives by sea. Um, we forget about that as an industry. We forget about the health of our seas and oceans and water systems. Because we're land-based creatures, it's easy to forget the element of water. So I'm making a film that is 24 hours and 50 minutes long um, that describes the movement of high tide wrapping around our little island because we have a hugely dynamic coastal coastal range to our tides. You know, it's a very unusual feature of our, where we are. And at a time when so much divides us on this little island, I wanted to think about a mechanism that something that's happening uh, environmentally that happens every day, a clock that beats to a completely different rhythm um, that holds us. And I think of high tide as a wave that holds us. And I'm going to be inviting people to send me little clips of what they see when they see the sea. And that is the material that I'll be patchworking together to make this very long film, the length of a lunar day. So I hope at some point you might notice some of the chatter around this and you might want to join. But don't forget your drawing first. Make a drawing where you are the river and the river is you. Okay, thank you.